All right. So we got ourselves some issues with Harada, who's admitting that Tekken's a uh, Tekken story as a whole maybe is bad. And we have our boy Moon Salt Slayer to give us the details about what's going on. And before we start, I'm gonna say I love the Tekken Eight story to a certain extent. I thought it would be one of the best stories ever told. I thought it would be the best Tekken 4. I thought it would be the best Tekken 5. I honestly believe it would be better than Tekken 6 and 7 combined. But I was wrong. And you look at my old um, trail reaction to Tekken 8 story mode. And you will just see like how hype I was. And how graciously disappointed I was. So at the end result. When I say I love Tekken 8 story. I love like what we're going to do with it, with the whole ending of the Mishima um, drama, stuff like that. Turns out what's going to end it at all. How could you? How could you end it? It's the bigger, major money maker right there. You end it, and the story, I guess, is just done. Would you agree? Let's see what Moon Salt Slayer has to say about this. The quality of Tekken story. Let's get it. of their 35th anniversary. This quickly turned into a conversation surrounding Harada and how good of an artist he is. Bro, uh -huh. like that. This one here is Reina, who is the Undersea Warfare Research Division campus of Mishima Technical College. Okay, wow. not to get off topic. But College? They say the Mishima Polytechnical High School, and now they're saying the Mishima Technical College. So this is just an idea of how old Reina could be, if we can use this canon. But this conversation mm, quickly interesting. Into a conversation about story. Um, there was a certain thing that happened, right? Um, when it comes to the tabs, after you finish, um, Heihashi's um story DLC, yeah, it could be Heihashi's story DLC. I don't care what you say. You have some tabs open on the sides. Talk about certain letters, certain story tidbits. Come to June. We'll come to like. Leo's uh, mother, and when it comes to like the the true birth of Reina, um, due to reports of like what's going on for Heihachi, um, we found out that his, this man went out and annihilated the Hajido clan. So people assumed that the Hajido was like alive and kicking and just orchestrating some things around the world trying to smoke uh the Heihachi whatever. But apparently, things was like. Not that simple. Like, the Hajiko clan just got wiped off the map. Like, no funny. It really got wiped off the map. It's insane. You know? So it's like, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that, you know? <laughs> Golly, dude. That's insane. You know? That's really insane. In general, one person responded to Rada and said, You should quit video games and become a manga illustrator instead, Senpai. You. <laughs> that is so mean, bro. What is wrong with that guy? That is so mean. Literally, the meanest thing you say to a creator like. Here's a new flash, right? With all the things that happened, even though I do believe to this day that Harada lied about Hayashi coming back, I honestly can't hold it against him as a creative for Tekken for a long time. You know? I'm never gonna like, you know, push him aside. You know what I'm saying? He's still gonna be around. I like the dude. I don't want him to stop. This this is a goofy comment. I can't hold you. Goofy is coming out here. Bar none. Bar none. Bar none. Bar none. Bar none. Mad goofy. Do not take this dude seriously. <laughs> but I want to... Uh, let me hear more. You will make millions. And this is where Harada really starts talking about the story of Tekken. And this is where things get crazy. Well, like says, that? Okay. Let's think calmly together. 
You will always be a manga artist, but don't you think that the story is more important than the art for manga? And you know, the story of the 30 years of the Tekken series, I create, don't you? You still yeah. think I'm a good manga artist, two question marks. Now, the way uh, I was on the Tekken sub That's kind of weird, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Just admit slash confirm that the Tekken writing is bad. You can decide oh. <laughs> That was a great ass something right there, boy. Sheesh. Whether or not the story is bad and how the developers perceived it, right? Because the first thing you have to talk about, and this is what I always think is so fascinating about Tekken. Tekken has two Guinness World Records currently. They had many others, but right now they have two. One of the Guinness World Records is the longest yeah, I remember that. fighting game video game franchise. This has been updated when Tekken 8 came out, so it's the king Damn. If they ever reboot the franchise like in Mortal Kombat or something, oh no. The no. The record is the longest running consistent video game universe, and this is basically the longest running story. So Tekken has this world record for the longest Crazy. Fighting game, but in every video game you can ever imagine. Tekken Yo, yeah. Story. With that being said, the story is filled with retcons and plot holes. And Way too much. A lot of things of changes, yeah. Like the major miscus, like the major um change I found out, you know, the last some um, videos here and there about the origins of Jinpachi's demon thing. Turns out it was originally supposed to be a devil gene thing. The dude supposed to have the devil gene. And it's supposed to be like a, a true corrupted form of it. And it will make sense why Jepasi acted the way he did because the Jevon gene was messing up his mind. And one of the reasons why he was alive this whole entire time. But it will not, it will be like, be like an evil source. And to this day, it's never been explained what the hell that evil source was. And it's not the devil gene. If you ask Harada, Harada, what was. Jinpachi's demon. Was it really the devil gene? If he says yes, then that means this dude actually retcon his retcon. <laughs> or backpedal to his original idea. Or he ain't gonna say nothing about it because and whatever, you know? Man, I miss Jinpachi, dude. You should have brought that dude back. Really enough. Mm -hmm. games a very very long time to finally start to take story seriously um we got to give a lot of credit to soul caliber because they're one of the few fighting games who took it seriously from the start that mm. is why they incorporated yoshimitsu they talked to Harada and they said we want to put yoshimitsu in here crazy we feel like we could do something incredible with the lore and a lot of the things we think about with yoshimitsu the manji plan the sword his healing all of the things we think about comes from Soul Calibur. If that game yeah. what they did early on, Yoshimitsu would be another blank canvas like so many characters on the roster of Tekken. Uh -huh. So fighting games took a very long time to get serious with the story, but you have all of these retcons and plot holes, and sometimes they got a retcon the past to try to make sense of it, but as we see with Tekken 8 and also Tekken 7, they're continuously making mistakes. Now, yeah. when you talk specifically about Tekken 7, I try to give them the benefit of the doubt. And here's why. When you look at the uh, Art of Tekken visual guide, it talks uh, about basically the whole entire Tekken series. This came right. out in 2019, so Tekken 8 isn't included. Maybe they'll okay. just update and add Tekken 8 to the They game. should, they should. about Tekken 7, um, it talks about, uh, I'll just read it. There were a lot of problems in development of story mode. All members in charge of this party just gathered a lot to discuss solutions and confirm processes again and again. A little bit. What I remember most uh, was the last part of the development. In order to take it to the delay, mm -hmm. I left most of the parts up to Ikeda and worked on scripting from morning till night for two weeks. Because of this scenario delay, Dang. the development time for the story mode was hugely reduced. Because <laughs> Damn. of that, the quantity of scenario was reduced and some parts were cut. 
with pictures based on planned movie parts uh, put in their place. So this basically explains exactly what happened to the second story. They were running short on time. They were very behind. They uh, had massive chunks of, of story. If you guys don't know, Jin was supposed to be like a boss somewhere in the story. There's a for Tekken uh, Seven. Like a start of wow. Wow. The images that we see where the narrator is talking over. And I know the narrator is one of the worst parts for a lot of people, but they were behind. So this is why I just say I try to give them Wow, so the narrator was nothing more nothing more than a placeholder, dude. Really? He was just a placeholder. And something that Harada said back down to it, like, hey, um, we made the um the, the reporter boring for relatability and blah. Man, no one blared to that boring bastard, dude. Come on. Give us some lay Wulong, bro. He'd be a better MC right there, man. Oh, my gosh. It's so, it's so easy, bro. And then you'd be like, yeah, you see Lei Wulong here? What you see him for the game when he hits in the next season of Tekken 7? Like, it, it's easy. What be an easy uh, loop leeway to bring your Lei Wulong in? It's so simple. The, hmm. Man, but I'm not... I don't know what like what really happened in the closed doors. All we know about what was reported. But you only have people in place to play the narrator. Like, that's, that's so bad, bro. Time is not on their side. We all know what Tekken Tag Tournament 2 did to the franchise. And they didn't yeah. have the luxury to make these kind of decisions. They just had to do what they did. Like, Parada right. said, Claudio setting and story parts will be very important. We've been needing to mm, yeah, stand was. against the power of the devil that we've seen throughout the story setting and series. This is just like a rough idea of Claudio and, you know, with Tekken 8, we'll see how he ended. In my opinion, Claudio really didn't get to do much and you can say that's the main character. I mean, he, as a force to fight against he helped. He wasn't prepared for Hiachi, he got stomped out. He used one magical ability against Kazuya and he barely hit him. When you listen to what the developers say about these characters and how they promote these characters, and then you play the game yourself. Dude, you know, the fact that he survived this. Bull, I hate this scene so much. For some odd reason, some weird reason. Both Zafina and Mario survived it, yes. For those who don't know, if you peep at Tekken 8's um, ending credits, you will see Zafina full view. No, um, Azazel's demon claw arm. And then you see a little bit of Clario foot. So, when it comes to deaths, it really means absolutely nothing. And Heihashi coming back sealed the deal on that forever. I can't take this to really seriously. Even though it was funny, they established how funny it could be. But come on. That's how my check was Victor, bro. What? Man. Raven cooked, bro. We all remember the Heiachi mission is dead, but now we're going to see a better Raven do its thing. But then after playing the game and the story DLC, like, I get why they say he's going to have a big role, but when you really look at it, he has what is a What is a big role? Him being a, a, a guy who's just there? Yeah, because he fought with Lars, bro. Like, Tekken 6, regardless of, like, how horrendously bad his story was. Oh, my gosh. Raven was, like, the guy who kept it together, man. With helping out Alyssa and Lars, being the inside guy, giving out intel, having, a, like, a hand, like, get, battling up with Kazuya, I think. Battling up with Azazel. I, I want to reason something I think because... I don't think they put too much emphasis on like Raven helping up. He's there, but how much help he was giving out? You know, how much of that is canon? Because if Karate decided, like, hey, I want an anime version of Tekken 6, would Raven do a lot of stuff? Would he help out a lot with Lars to, like, take down, like, people like Kazuya or um, Ezeza? Would he? I don't know. So it's, like, up in the air.
breaks and says, oh, okay, you go do that. And then that's it. That's not really a big role when you think about it, right? Yeah, that's not, that's an overreaction. Overall storyline this time. Previously, efforts carried out by the UN has not been portrayed much in the Tekken storyline. Raven and his organization will play a larger role in Tekken 8, including the UN's decision to sanction Beat Club. So this sounds... Mmm. They say Raven this, Raven that. But the real Raven was Shadow Raven. Or what Raven, whatever. Whatever the hell they call Victor. Because that's what Victor got. Backstab. That's a reach. What would this man gain from backstabbing Lars? And the only thing I'm thinking about right now is like he was loyal part of uh, Nimishima Jasu. And under, like with him, with Jin, Tekken 6, they were also like, you know, co responsible to destroying the world. And I guess by taking down Jin and Kazuya, he also bringing a Lars out like a war criminal. But he was helping out the res like, he was a resistance against those guys, dude. Like what? See, that's why it doesn't make any sense. It would not work. It's just goofy. No, Tekken is goofy, but it's way too goofy. Especially if you try to make it serious and it falls on his head to be goofy, that's the problem, man. That's the expectation. This switch will be serious, but it's not. It is not right, too. It's not good writing. I'm not gonna lie, this video was good, bro. And then Victor shows up with Lars after forming a team, and then they show up and basically uh, siege the place. And this is something that I've always said, why don't anyone do? You know, if Kazuya, Jay, and Hayaki are the are I said that too. You know where at. That's so odd. A, That's you know, so, so weird. Why don't you just drop a bomb and like, have a sniper or do something? Specific? Yeah. And Victor kind of did a variation of that. Me personally, I'm surprised he took Which is not good. Execution was not there, dude. Everywhere. Um, for the yeah. Guinness World Record and for his way to be written this poorly, it kind of sucks. Even though Hilati acknowledges that the story isn't the best, I mean, you know, we talked about how Tekken 7 is not laid out. You know, what's the excuse for Tekken 8? I just find it, it was good. that the developers are just incapable of telling a cohesive story. And we're gonna, hold on, what are you gonna say? It blows the mind how fighting game developers just can't get it figured out, which is so fascinating. Like, they brought back Hayaki. But do they know where they want to push him and how they want to develop him? And they know what story they want to tell him. Uh -huh. They just bring him back just to bring him back. Get motherfuckers, I'm coming for you! Okay, okay. Alright. <laughs> yeah. Um. If you want to talk about like, quality of story, quality of story dropped after Tekken 4. To this day, Tekken 4 will be the peak. We'll come to the dark setting. Come to the, like the character struggle. We'll come to like the structure of the story with the Mishima like, family, bro. That was right there, man. Ace in the hole. Peak Tekken. That's peak Tekken right there. But after that, it was some mid with Tekken 5. Some bad storytelling. Almost horrendous storytelling with Tekken um, 6. And God also stories. Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> oh, for Tekken 7, man. But for Tekken 8, 
What did I give the overall story? I forgot. I think I gave it like a four or five. I don't remember, but I gave it like a bad rating. But yeah, man. Shout out to Moon Salt Slayer W video. And check out his other videos, man. Guy busts out some quality content. Check him out. So, y'all be safe, be easy, and be chilled. Yeah, second story flunked hard, bro.